What's up everyone? This is Jim with Calibrated Chaos Aquatics. I am officially on vacation for the next seven days. So the first thing I wanted to do was I wanted to get you guys out some content. And I decided that the best way to do that was to go with one of my current builds. This, you're looking at a 20 gallon tank. This is the second tank I ever built. It's pretty much the original design. I started out trying to play with organic soil. I'd never done a planted tank like that before. And in a sense, this is almost my first planted tank because my first tank was the 60 that I've already done a video on, or a couple of videos on, but I didn't plant it at first. So this was the rescue tank that I used when that tank went south. And I, you can see the other video on my channel, and it kind of explains what happened. So what I did here was I had to have a place to put all my fish. So it was kind of an emergency situation. My tank had problems. My 60 had problems. So I went out and I bought this, but I wanted to play with the planted tank. So I bought the organic soil. It cost me about $4 for the bag of soil. And I topped it with the stone layer. So I capped it with that, but the stone turned out to be too coarse. So... The soil kept leaching up through the stone. It took me almost, ooh, probably three weeks to figure out that it was never going to clear. The water kept turning brown. I couldn't get it to clear out. So I finally discovered that, after some research, that I needed something finer to cap the soil with. So I went and got what was originally white sand. Obviously, it doesn't look very white anymore. But this tank's been set up for probably six to eight months now. Um, I capped it. It cleared. I moved all of my fish to it. There was probably 45 to 50 fish in here over the course of a long weekend while I salvaged the other tank. Once I got the other tank situated, I moved all the larger fish out, and I kept just the neon tetras and the glow light tetras in this tank. They've been here ever since, and over that time period, I have not lost a single fish out of this tank. So this is probably my most mature and my most stable tank. It's been a learning experience. Uh, the plants you see are... Java ferns over here, the two big plants. This leafy plant in the middle is an Anubius nana, I believe. I'll double check that and I'll leave a link for all the plants in the description. Um, up in the corner you can see bamboo plant. And it's not doing well, it's too submersed, it needs to come up out of the water more. That's one of the only plans I have to change in this tank at the moment. Um, let's see, what problems did I run into? Well, once I got the water cleared up, I ended up, if you if you can tell, there's, there's a really thick layer of soil in this. Um, it's kind of too much substrate. It's, it's potentially problematic because having substrate that thick can cause anaerobic situations. So far, I haven't really had any of those. I try to poke around in the soil every once in a while. I usually use just a pair of tweezers or pincettes. And I do let some bubbles up out, but it seems to keep things fairly balanced. There's two different kinds of grasses in here. This thicker stuff in the foreground that you see is a dwarf sage. And the really fine stuff in the further back is a dwarf hair grass. There is one Marimo moss ball in the background. And over here in this corner here, you can see what is a water lily that <laughs> is, it's growing, but it's growing very slowly. That bulb has been buried in there since I set this tank up, and the leaves just started coming up maybe a month ago when I increased the lighting on the tank. So, um, I'm not sure what's going on with that plant, but... The rest of it's done pretty well. It's it's my best growing tank. You can see there's some black algae on some of the leaves. But that's over the course of eight months. And really all I've done to this tank is 
regular water changes. Um, I clean the sides of the glass periodically. I just actually added the blue background to make the the video um, because you can see all the cords and everything hanging in the back and I thought this just looked cleaner. I don't know. I like it. I had a piece of blue construction paper and I stuck it on the back and I don't know. It kind of brightens up the tank. So let me know what you think. Do you guys use backgrounds? Um, I tend to use just basic backgrounds. I use, I've use i used some black construction paper, some blue, some gray. Um, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not big on pictures and stuff on the back, so I, I, it just, it looks fake to me. Um, but this definitely brightens the tank. So, some of the problems I did run into, I've had very few with this tank, I've been very lucky. But one of the things I did have a problem with was I had a smaller filter on the tank because I have this thick layer of soil. And at one point the water started getting really, really cloudy. And I've had people tell me, PetSmart, Petco people, nobody ever any real experience, but they told me it was an algae issue. I didn't really believe them. I thought it was more of a bacteria issue. Uh, it didn't seem to affect the fish at all, but... I couldn't clear it up. I was doing water changes like every two days and I just kept having the same problem. It just, like the next day it would cloud up, it would look milky and it just kept getting worse and worse and worse and I wasn't sure what to do so I tried a few different things. Uh, I tried turning off the light for a few days that, I don't know, it helped and then I put a better water filter on it. I have an aqua clear hang on back hanging, hanging off of this and the combination of that and lowering my light for a while seemed to really help. But the problem I have right now is that I've got a lot of plant growth in here. It's doing great. I'm trying to establish the dwarf sage and the hair grass. And I think the root of my big problem is the thick layer of substrate. I mean, in the back, there's probably six to eight inches. And that's a lot in a 20-gallon tank. So what I've done is kind of try to alternate high light low light i'll go low for a few days jack it up for a few days it's not ideal but the plant growth in here is crazy it's the best growing tank i have and the solution long term to my problem is to tear this tank down redo the substrate so that i have a thinner layer of soil and rock and sand and then it would probably not have the bacteria problem that it has. But if I do that, I have to remove all of this plant. So I don't want to do that because they're growing so well. So for now, I'm sitting tight. I'm trying to propagate some of these grasses, get them growing. I may eventually use the, the ferns in, in other builds. But these fish have done great. They've been happy in this tank. Uh, there's a piece of driftwood here. In the center, uh, there's a good portion of it that's buried, but it's kind of hollowed out, and it gives the fish a cave. This cave here is actually just a coffee cup, uh, submerged, buried in the substrate. But when I do my water changes, all of these fish filter into that cup where they hide, they feel safe. Do my water changes, they come back out. Um, I don't know, I think it's just turned into a really good environment for the fish in this tank. Like I said, in eight months, I haven't lost a single fish out of this tank, which is pretty rare. I lose fish... Ooh, God, I've lost a lot of fish <laughs> since I started this a year ago, and I've probably... I'm probably averaging a fish a month between the other two tanks, but I've lost nothing out of this tank, so... I feel like I'm doing something right here, and I kind of hate to mess with it. So, it's not the perfect tank... But, I don't know, I think it's doing, it's doing well. I think I'm on the right track. I, I think I've learned a lot from this tank, probably more than from any of my other tanks. Which is a little weird, because in a way I've done the least to this tank. But maybe that's part of the solution. Maybe once you get it set up, you just leave it alone, you let it stabilize, you let it mature. I think it takes time to build a stable tank, and this one's been undisturbed, other than cleanings and water changes. And like I said, I mean, you can see some, some black algae on some of the plants, but they're still growing and they're still healthy. And I have done 
almost no trimming. I trim the grasses. You can see here in this section some of the hair grass needs to be trimmed now. It's getting really long. And I plan this week at some point to trim that. Once I do, it'll it'll propagate more growth. It tends to send out runners that way. So I'll, I'll trim that down a little shorter and clean it up, make it look better. Hopefully it'll promote some new growth. Um, but the ferns and the anubias, I haven't done any trimming on them at all. And as you can see, there's there's like no actual dead leaves. Some of them are a little curled and not looking great, but overall... Those plants are doing pretty awesome. So, the only thing in here is fish. There's no snails, there's no shrimp, there's no anything extra in here. I feed flake food primarily to this tank. I've tried some other stuff. I do feed them some bloodworms, but I don't know. They don't seem crazy about the bloodworms. I, I, maybe they just need more time to get used to it. But so far, they're primarily flake fish. I've tried some of the bottom feeder stuff, but they don't go after that really at all. And I don't really have, I don't have a power head in here, so brine shrimp, frozen brine shrimp are difficult. Um, and I'll, I'll show you what I mean in another video on that. But brine shrimp, frozen brine shrimp, or, or in my opinion, most of your frozen foods, they work really well if you have a power head because you can kind of hold the the block of frozen food in front of the power head and it blows it across the tank and thaws it out and otherwise you just have a chunk of frozen fish that they can or frozen food that the fish can pick at and I mean I guess that's okay I just it seems more efficient to do it with the power head uh, I run a I believe it's a tetra water heater on here it's just a small compact it's up here in this corner um, it's hard to see because it's behind the plant there is a bubbler in this tank because I don't have a power head, so there's it's it's really the only air input. Um, there are the LED lights that came. This was a kit tank that I bought actually at Walmart, and it had a set of LED lights in the cover. I've added another set so that I can get this bright light that you're looking at now. That's that's the highlight setting you're seeing. Um, if I turn it off, which I can't reach right now because the camera's in the way, it, it cuts the light dramatically. So I kind of run it a few days on the lower setting and a few days on the higher setting. And other than a little bit of algae growth, that's that seems to be working. Um, I think that's just about it. That pretty much covers this build. I hope it gives you some ideas. I like the heavy planting in this tank. I'd like to plant my other tanks a little heavier. And I think the fish are happier having all this excessive vegetation in here. Um, let me know what you think. Do you guys run planted tanks? If you got any ideas on things you might you think might look good in here, let me know. But at this point, I kind of consider this tank pretty much complete. Thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe.